Okay, so we're going to, we've done the theory, we're now going to do some examples that we've got here. So we know that if you have z minus z1 equals r, we can draw it as a circle. So we'd better just manipulate this so it's in the correct form. So it's going to be z minus, and I need to put in brackets what this other complex number is going to be. Now, I'm basically factorising by a minus 1 here, so that would leave me inside the brackets with a 5 plus 3i. You can just spot you'd get minus 5 and minus 3i. So what this means is it is going to be a circle. It is going to have centre 5, 3. Make sure that you always do the real and then the complex for these bits. And it's going to have a radius of 3. Now when it wants you to do a sketch, it really doesn't need to be accurate at all, but you better think carefully about how these things might land. So the centre is 5 along and 3 up. So it's 5 along and 3 up. And it needs to have a radius of 3. So if it has a radius of 3, I'm going to make this a little bit longer, it means it's going to come all the way down here and all the way up here. So it's going to go from the 3 at the centre, it's going to go down to the 0 and up to the 6. I luckily have this tool that will help me draw circles, um, but there we go, that's not too bad. But it probably should be touching the bottom, shouldn't it? There we go, so there's the centre of the circle, which has coordinates 5, 3. And it's kind of implied here that it's got a radius of 3. We could either indicate it like this. could also add on that it's going to be a 6 here, because if the radius is 3, it's going to be coming all the way up to 6 and down to 0. So we could find, now what we want to do is to find the Cartesian equation of this locus. So we want to get it away from complex numbers, and instead we want to put it into like x and y versions. That's what Cartesian means. It means stuff to do with x and y. Now you could dive straight in from this method that you've got from the sketch. You could just actually um, say what the, the equation of it is. And we'll do that one in a second, but I'm going to start off with the slightly longer way to try and deepen our understanding of this definition of the modulus. So I'm not even going to do anything to do with the fact of this circle. I'm literally just going to do the whole thing using algebra and this bit that we've got here. Now we know that z can be represented as x plus iy. So if I'm going to do z, the modulus of z minus 5 minus 3i is 3, I'm going to replace the z with x plus i y. I'm going to minus 5 and I'm going to minus 3i and that's equal to 3. I'm going to collect the real parts so I have x minus 5 and the imaginary parts so that's y minus 3 and now I'm actually going to find the modulus of this complex number. Remember the modulus of a complex number just means do Pythagoras to it so it will be the square root of x minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 3. Now, last thing we do here is we get rid of the square root sign by squaring both sides. And so we end up with this equation that we've got here. And that kind of makes sense because you can tell from this definition that the center is 5, 3 and that the radius is the square root of 9, which is 3, which is everything I've got here. Now, if you are very good with just your sketch of the circle, you should be able to dive in with your definition of what we've just said. This is literally going to be in reverse. We know that this equation that we've got here is our general equation of a circle that has centre A, B. So we can just dive straight in and just say it would be x minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals the radius squared, which gives you the exact same thing that we've got over there. Okay. You're not going to get something quite as easy as that in the exam, but for a, a starting one, it works. It's kind of nice to see how the algebra works here too. So this time it wants us to sketch the locus of these points represented by this thing that we've got here. I'm not going to need to do the Cartesian, but we might do it as well. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite it so it's in the correct form, this form. So it's going to be Z minus, and I think what has to go inside the brackets as a complex number. Well, the 3 is going to be able to be a, um, a positive 3, but the i is going to need to be a minus 4i. So if you're taking a negative out, you need to flip both of the signs. So we have the positive 3 and a negative 4i. So we know we're going to have a circle. It's going to have center 3 minus 4, and it's going to have a radius 5. So when we go to do our sketch, 
going to be 3 along. It's going to be minus 4 down here. Now, be careful, because if it has a radius of 5, you should recognise that a 3, 4, 5 triangle from Pythagoras. So if this is a 3 and this is a 4, the radius of 5 is actually going to be the length of this line that you've got here. This is going to be 5. So when you draw that circle, and this is going to probably not go very well here. Let's see if I can... That's not bad. It is going to be going through the origin because this is three across, this is four here, which means the radius, which is five, would indeed be going through the origin, okay? So I've made that diagram a little bit messy, but the key things we need to note is that the center is three minus four, and the radius is five. Now, if you wanted to put this in Cartesian form, you could dive straight in. We could say it would be x minus three squared plus y minus minus four, or y plus four squared equals five squared, which is 25. So that would be the Cartesian form. This one's interesting because it's in a little bit of an odd form that we've got here. We want to do like a z minus z1 equals r, but we've got like a minus z here. Now, I'm going to do a little trick, okay? I'm actually going to factorise the whole thing inside, and I'm going to take a negative outside of it. So I'm going to put a negative, and I'm going to have, there'll be a positive for the z, and everything's going to switch. So it'll be z minus 2 minus 4i. These should be nice big modulus signs here. Hopefully you can agree what I've written here and what I've written here is the same. Now, because we're just talking about a modulus, and this thing and this thing have just been negated, the modulus is just saying the length of the line. So this negated part can be ignored. This can be ignored because the modulus sign doesn't care about whether it's positive or negative. It just cares about the length of it. So the little trick that we can do to get rid of this negative in front of the z, we can factor out the negative from the whole thing and then if we wanted to, we could take the negative um, out the front, but we don't really need to. We can actually just say that this is the same thing as this. OK, so we've been able to rewrite the left hand side as that. So putting it in its correct form, it would be 2 plus 4i equals 4. So it's going to be a circle. Its centre is 2, 4 and its radius is 4. So 2 along, 4 up. And if its radius is 4, that means it's going to come all the way down to the bottom and it'll go all the way up here. Let's draw a circle. Let's hope I can do an OK one. It's going to go quite a bit further to the left this time, isn't it? So it's going to go a bit more like this. And let's just shift that up a tiny bit so that it's just bumping the axis. Hopefully you can spot this would be coming up to 8 because the centre is 4 and the bottom is 0. Um, two, great. This then should be coming to minus 2. And this should be coming to 6 because that distance is 4 and that distance there is 4 as well. Now when it says a sketch, it doesn't have to be with a compass, it just needs to look roughly like this, okay? And if I was going to do this as a Cartesian, it would be x minus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals the radius squared, which is 16. Sometimes it's tempting just to write 4, but it's good to have the squaring of the 16 in here. Now, you might be thinking, why did Mr. Bison show me this method here? And that this is going to be really, really useful for later on. So every now and then you might like to Instead of just doing method two, like I've done here and here, you might like to think about trying that. This one is a neat trick for these kinds of things where there's the minus z as well. Okay, we're going to do one more video on circles and then we'll go to the next loci.